Hello and welcome to Table for Five with no reservations. Take a seat at the table for a fresh, sweet, salty, tart, and pleasantly bitter conversation. Thank you for taking a seat at the table. Tonight we're going to be talking about puberty in a standalone episode. And we have a special guest, Lisa Hogworth. And seated with me tonight, I have Jen. Hi. Rachel. Hey. Jamie. Hello. Kim. Hi. And our lovely guest, Lisa. Lisa, if you just want to do a quick introduction to who you are and where people can find you, and then we'll start our chat. Yes, of course. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be here. So my name is Lisa. I'm mom to Cody. I have a Facebook page called Cody Speaks where I share basically our life living with autism. My son, Cody, was diagnosed with autism at the age of 17 months, many, many, many years ago. Severe autism, nonverbal autism. And then probably about two years, two, yeah, about two years ago, then his diagnosis was added to with ID, which stands for intellectual disability. And that was sort of a sucker punch. I'm like, seriously, you know, another diagnosis, how's this, you know, how's this going to, I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle this. So anyway, at first, when I first started the page, it was kind of just, you know, back and forth conversations because I showed how Cody does have words. He didn't have any words until nine, but I always talked to him in kind of a conversational way. Cause I just felt like it was the right thing to do. I mean, he's a person. He's a human being. It doesn't matter if he couldn't communicate. It was important to me to still talk to him. Hey, buddy, how was your day? So it was like years of that and nothing for so long. And then all of a sudden he started, you know, um, answering back. And so I whipped out my phone, started making videos and he really liked watching the videos. And I thought, well, hey, maybe I'll share our life, you know, share how you you know, you never know how far these kids are going to go. You just don't know. You have to keep trying and maybe they won't speak, but maybe they'll type or maybe they'll use a device or sign or all kinds of things. So that's kind of how it started. And um, it's evolved over time as everything should. Right. And I found it very cathartic to kind of share our story. And I didn't know I really didn't know if anybody would follow. I was, I mean, it's been kind of amazing. It really has. And I do a little bit on Instagram, not as much. I, I kind of get confused on what to post there. I mean, I don't know <laughs> if anybody else has that problem or if it's just me, you know, I get, I mean, so I kind of freeze a little bit and I'm like, okay, well, I haven't posted anything there in a while. Maybe I should, what should I post? So I kind of go back and forth with why did I even start that? It's, it's been hard, but I do enjoy the, the, the big page. I do have a a small supporter group. It's very intimate and I'm, I'm enjoying that. I sometimes kind of struggle with sharing a lot on there. Like I'm just getting used to it. I'm pretty private. I I know that sounds crazy because I'm public, right. With, with our life. But for me, I'm kind of private, like my feelings and all that. So I'm kind of just starting to understand, you know, what works for me and all that, but I'm enjoying the people that I have on there. And that's, that's been fun. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah. you have another I love your page. Thank you so much. And you have yeah. your son, Justin he helps you with your page. He, um, not, not really. I mean, he, the video? if I have any technical issues, you know, yeah. he can, he can help me with that. He, Early on, he showed me how to edit videos and things like that, but I do it all on my own now. And he's, he's busy. He's got his own life. He goes to college and he has a new job and he's got his own page. He kind of does gaming. He enjoys that, but the boys look so much alike. Yeah, I know. It was funny when they were younger, everyone, you have twins. I'm like, oh, (laughs) we just got that asked that about our kids. This really week, actually yeah are they twins I'm like no. no I mean I was like they don't look like twins to me I'm like okay yeah. no <laughs> and my husband he's wonderful so I don't know that I would there are many days where I'm like why am I still doing this especially on the hard days you know where you're just you know you get punched and you're just like you know why are you doing this and I'm just like oh, I don't know why I'm doing this it's like <laughs> why do I have to put this put up with this 
from you. It's like, why am I doing this? And it brings you down. And so, and you know, it's, it's hard. It is Kate said it before. And I, I, I really believe it too. It's soul sucking. It really is. I limit my time on social media. I post, I schedule my posts. Then I kind of stay off of it for my own mental health. It's too much because I'm constantly comparing. Am I doing enough? Am I doing, you know, well, look, so-and-so is doing this. Maybe I should do that. Well, you know what? I'm my own person and I need to realize that. And my page is my page alone. And it's going to look very different from everyone else's page. But I think that for me, that has been so hard to like stand there and say, this is the direction that I'm going and it's okay. This is what I want to share. This is how I want to share it. And I don't want to do this or, you know, B, C or D, you know, I, this is me. I struggle with that a lot as far as kind of comparing my page to other pages. And so I, I don't know if it's just me, but I, I definitely limit my time on social media and I try to stay grounded. And I try to remember that the most important thing in my life is my family and yeah. my page has to come second. It just does. Yeah. And so when I'm really, really overwhelmed, it's usually because I'm spending too much time, mental energy mm -hmm. on my page or for whatever right. reason. So I have to just take a step back. Lisa, I got to tell you, girl, your page has been one of the most consistent views into an entire family. Oh, I'm going to get a little verklempt about it. I just have to tell you that your every facet of your page matters to me. Oh. I was just two years ago, an autism mom that knew nothing. And the way that I got to watch Justin be with Cody and Cody be with Justin and watch that grow. And your husband not only have a relationship with Cody, but with Justin and with you and watch all of the different facets of your family intertwine. It is unlike any other page in that way. And it feels like you're showing your whole self and the way that the whole support system supports Cody and you. I mean, I don't mean to, yeah, you're the primary caregiver in my eye and everybody's there to support you and Cody and the facilitation of the other people coming in. I just want you to know that. Thank you. That's wow. I don't know what to say. Um, that means a lot. It really does. That's, That's why you're here today is because Jen has made a connection with you and we've all heard you speak in our blog squad, but but really the way you have autism in your home and show it is inspiring beyond measure. Thank you so much. Is, isn't it crazy how you just, you doubt yourself constantly? I mean, even that doesn't matter what level you're at. You just constantly like, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I portraying it right? And I'm like, this is my real life. I've had people say that's gotta be scripted. And I'm like, this <laughs> life is scripted. What? Wow. <laughs> like, there was, there was one video. Uh, no. I, was one where I was talking with Justin, you know, about his day or whatever. And then Cody comes running in and he was like all out of control. And I talked about how his meltdown superseded our conversation. And they're like, well, that was scripted. There's no way that that would, I'm like, yeah, that happens all the time, all the time. <laughs> That's why I mean, unless they get it from a movie made by Disney, yeah. there's no scripting our children, you idiot. Oh, I'm like, how, yeah. how would you script that? I'm like, yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> right. My son is not going to do anything he doesn't want to do. Cody. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's not going to make a video. He's not going to talk about anything. He's, he's not going to act a certain way. You know, he, I can't get him to the table if he doesn't want to, you know, do school. It's like, I tell him it's time for school. You need to go to the table. If you don't want to do school, then you need to go to the table and you need to say goodbye and close it. That's how I handle it. And if he never comes to the table, I'm like, sorry, I can't make a 20 year old come to the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Just the fact that you've achieved 20 years makes me also want to cry. We're at six and I'm like, oh my God, she's a survivor. And she's boy, I did not tell Bless you. you. How did you puberty? <laughs> I did not think I was going to survive. Let me tell you, it was, I had, there was like 10 years where I was like, I am not going to make it. Yeah. So I mean, every day, right. Every yeah. single day. It's like, yeah, I every, can't exactly. And then you get up and, and you just do it. Five. You do. You just do it. You just one foot in front of the other, you know, you just, yeah. And I want to say Lisa, like you're, so you're one of the first, cause you know, these blogs and all these Facebook pages weren't really around when we were coming up into it. My daughter's 25. Right. And when she, 
decided to transition into adult services, I started freaking out because there are not very many adult services. And um, she was also kind of going through like this learning explosion at the same time. So it's like the worst time for her to lose a lot of her services. And I started seeking stuff out and found Kate and then found you through Kate and you and Kate were the, I mean, biggest inspiration for me starting my page. I love Cody's story of him, you know, learning to speak and just his personality and your personality. Yeah. And then Alyssa started saying words. I mean, she's not as conversational as Cody, but started saying words at 21, which was not expected because by 21. Right. Yeah. You kind of like, yeah, Yeah. you kind of over that, like okay, this is non-verbal for life, but you, you figure it out. Like you said, yeah, you were like a huge inspiration for me. Cause you guys are the first two pages I started following. I wasn't really seeking yeah. that stuff out anymore by, you know, 16, 17, 18, you kind of got most of it figured out. And then they turn adult and you're like, Oh, what's this? I so wish that I had something when Cody was younger, I feel like it would have helped me so much. And I don't yep. know. I definitely don't think I could have done a page. I say that too. Because I was barely hanging on. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, I mean, I would go days without even getting dressed and showered because he was just so explosive that I don't think that I had the strength to manage a page, even get any. I mean, I was I was really basically a mess, but I feel like it would have helped me um, not feel so alone. Yeah. yeah. I'm of the unshowered mess variety right now. And I have to tell you that the page is what helps me to process. Yeah. And I would bet that all of us would agree that in trying to bring clarity to your writing, it brings clarity to your perception and your Experience. view of how mm-hmm. you're going to sort it all out. Yeah, definitely. It gives you like a light. Okay. People live like this. We'll, we'll get somewhere. <laughs> There'll be a change. We won't be where we're at forever and ever. Right. Yeah, definitely. And there's always a story I find that you're like, oh, wow, I wish it was that little bit easier. It, whether it's that, oh, I wish my child could talk or I wish, you know, we had it like this. But then there's like another story on the back end that's like, like so much hotter than the life that you're living. So then that grounds me a little bit, even though like you obviously know this, but like, you know, sometimes you see it and you're like, well, it helps in that aspect, I think, too, for people to really see the stuff that all of us go through. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know if you guys, I, like, it's hard to find a page that feels authentic. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I post what's really actually happening day to day. And although I might post, might, might not post it the day that it's happening because I'm always filming bits and pieces just as I feel it. Like, I don't, you know, it's just, I'm sometimes I'm like, I feel like filming anything today. I don't want to talk. I don't want to have a conversation. So I take some breaks, but when I put out a video it's always after the fact, but it's, it's what's happening in our life. And I feel like it's hard to find those pages that, you know, it's, that's I know really it's why hard. I said to you what I did, like, there's such a genuine that if you were to share 90 straight days of happy, you would genuinely be in that happy for those 90 yeah. days. Yeah. And yeah. on day 91, you'd be like, here yeah. it is again, right. 91. I'm, we're messed up again. And then you have to crawl out and you bring us through in such a real raw, genuine, and like leading with love kind of way. You can hear in your voice, the way that you speak to Cody. I mean, that's why I am so excited to hear parts of your puberty story because my daughter is now six. She has autism and fetal alcohol syndrome among mental health conditions. And it's so disgust on all of the FAS boards that girls with FAS are going to turn this wicked turn during puberty. And I want to have a foundation of how I reason with her prior to the hormones shifting. And I look to people like you who share love and stern and strong and strength and structure all within the same sentence, because you do that beautifully. I'm sure that's how you're about to share with us how you got through that goddamn period. One of the first pieces of yours that I found, which it, it was probably through Kate, but it was a puberty piece you wrote. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And we are, so all of our children, I mean, Tabs has little ones, Jamie has little ones, Rachel's daughter's six, you know, Kim's been through it, her daughter's 25, and my daughter's 11. So we are right, I always tell the ladies when I open up her bedroom door in the morning, 
puberty up in here. I open the window, <laughs> go the air out a little bit. We have discovered our body. Lisa, I messaged you and I said, I don't know what to do. And you said, just keep telling her private. She'll eventually learn. You know, it's, it's tough. So I thought we would love to have you on to talk about it. Like I said, we get a lot of questions about it and none of us are experts. I mean, Kim, you've been through it, but Holy Hannah, is it a tough thing? And I'm very, like Kaya's dad said to me, why are you talking about our period on the internet? And I was like, because it's a fact that my daughter yeah. is going to have her period and is not going to understand what is happening to her body. Right. And so, yeah. So um, whatever you'd like to share with us, we'd love to hear your experience. We are all kind of stuck in the what ifs and the yeah. how to get through it. Well, let's see. Where do I start? I don't even, it's been, you know, we, we now have such a beautiful handle on it. Um, and it really wasn't terrible. I have to tell you when it first started was, um, I don't even remember how old he was. I I'm not good with timelines. I'm sorry. Um, I think that's how I get through a difficult situation. I don't hold on to when did it start? My yeah. husband knows exactly when everything. And I'm like, Oh my God. So anyway, um, it's been quite a few years, you know, he he started kind of touching himself on the school bus and, I got a call from the superintendent and it was not help. The conversation was pretty horrific. The way he handled it was terrible. The terminology that he used was, it was like nothing I'd ever heard before. He was referring to him, you know, going after his Johnson. I'm like, what's a Johnson? I'm like, <laughs> what are you saying to me right now? I'm like, <laughs> what is happening? I'm, like, I'm, I'm mortified on the phone and I'm like crying and my husband's like what I go I don't and he rips the phone and so it was terrible at first because Cody cognitively is not in his mind where his body is yeah so first off he was having these feelings and not understanding them and he's not even aware that he's on a school bus or not even thinking about it so he's starting to touch himself, you know, and we had to talk about it quickly. I had to talk about it in a way that made him not feel dirty mm-hmm. or like it was wrong. No I kidding. had to navigate it oh so carefully and I needed to choose my words so that he could understand because he's maybe not there. I just, it depends on what you're talking about, where he is cognitively. Right. It was so delicate and I didn't want him to feel ashamed. And so I talked with my BCBA. He's had ABA his whole life off and on. I've talked about that. I love ABA. Some people don't. It's not for everyone. So we chatted about how to handle it, did some social stories. You know, conversation is just big. Conversation is so powerful. That's all we do is talk about everything incessantly, because (laughs) I think that that is the best tool. It's really worked for us. And so I always just say conversation. I mean, I don't know everything about everything or really anything. I just lead with my heart and I just let him know that it wasn't okay to do this on the school bus. And we just talked about it over and over again. We let him know where it was okay to do it, which for him is in his room with his door closed or in the bathroom with the door closed. Now, does he always close the door? No. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you're walking down the hall and you're seeing a 20 year old man, it's a little shocking. (laughs) I'm not, and I'm his mom. And I'm like, what? Cody door slam it so we're he still you know isn't isn't always doing the right thing but he makes it in there you know and he he knows so just talking about it letting them know where it's okay that you need to be by yourself it's not okay for anyone else to touch you there's that's a whole nother thing you know that's it's important because our kids it's highly likely something could happen to them because they don't because know. they're vulnerable. Vulnerable right, position. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. that's a whole nother thing. You know, giving him the tools to know where to go. And if you're in a place that it's not okay, helping him kind of get to the place that it's okay. 
for us, sometimes when we're out, triggers for him are little girls in pink hats. I don't know why. So if they're out, if he's on a walk and he sees a little girl in a pink hat on a bike, we're all like, oh, crap. And we're, we're like looking and he's, so we have, to, and he'll say, girl. And I'm like, yes, that's a little girl. And I go, are you okay? He's like, yes. And so if he starts to kind of maybe put his hand where it shouldn't be, I'll just say, do you need to go home? So can you make it home? You know, it's, I mean, we do our best, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think that letting them know first and foremost, that it's not a bad thing. It's a natural thing and everyone does it, but you can't do it where everyone can see you. That's not okay. They're very capable of learning. And I, I'm not going to believe for a second that because my son has autism and ID, he cannot learn to do certain things. I don't believe any of that crap. I didn't I have to you know, tell you, Lisa, you wrote about this in an article on your page. And I read it, this story with the pink cats and the girls. And <laughs> first I could not stop laughing. And then I was never more grateful that time to that that I had a girl not a boy (laughs) I mean it has its own sort of problems but that's not one of them so (laughs) yeah Yeah. I tell you we were out one time shopping and it's happened before I've talked about it the three of us were out shopping we took Cody we were like in the shoe department and then Cody just like starts to walk off as he did as he does he's like okay I'm done with the shoe thing where I mean I'm like I'm gonna go to another department so he goes to the department you know, when the the younger children, you know, the, the banners that are like hanging from the ceilings when they're like dressed in the different outfits and things, he goes over there and he starts looking up. And then all of a sudden I'm like, we have a problem here. Like there, yeah. So I told my husband, I'm texting him, like 911, 911, we have a problem. We have a problem. Pink hat, the, pink hat. <laughs> yeah. Houston, Houston. Yeah. <laughs> I go, we're going to the bathroom right now. Where's the bathroom? we need to get into the bathroom. And he's, he could barely walk. And uh-huh. I'm just like, and, but so I got into the bathroom and, you know, in the, in the, the women's bathroom and all these older ladies are like, what's happening? Cause you know, he's a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, what's mm-hmm. a woman and a man doing in a bathroom stall. And so they're like, they're like looking through the crack and I'm like trying to block it, you know? <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> oh, look at, oh. and I'm like, Oh my God. And I'm texting my husband. I'm like, Oh my God, this shouldn't be happening to me. Why is this happening to me? I go, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and he's in there doing what he needs to do. And I'm trying to give him his privacy. So I'm like, I'm like turning my back to him, but I'm like, how you doing, buddy? Are you done? You know, are, are we done yet? Uh, this uh, is so hard, yeah. but you know, we got through it. We got Mm -hmm. through it. And I think talking about it, because I'm not the only one this is happening to, I promise you. Yeah. It's happening to lots of people and they're not talking about it. And that's fine if they don't want to talk about it. But for me, I needed to talk about it because I was like, this, this is Am I the only one in the stall of the Sears right now? (laughs) I'm I'm like, we were in there forever. I'm like, I told my husband, I'm like, how long does this take? (laughs) Can somebody teach him a speed course in this? <laughs> yeah. It like, has me so confused in how we are going to breach puberty and all of that is that we, as my daughter Celie's parents, encourage her to arouse and stimulate her need for sensory stuff. It's okay that you need to swing and we go swing. And it's okay that you need to hit your arm like that. It's okay because in stimming, she's got to do it. She has to let it out. She, and and if it's running, it's running. And if it's this, it's that, it's whatever. She hit the nipple in her swimsuit on the edge of a pool. We're into something. And how do I, like knowing what's coming, it's so strange to me to wrap my head around the language of it's okay to stimulate that need and not this one. And this one is okay and not that one. Because it's the same feeling for her, I assume. Yeah. I mean, I guess it does come down to where and with whom and how. That was one thing with ABA. They were like, well, he's doing a lot of vocal stem. So we need to to do something about that. And I go, do what about that? What are you saying right now? Because what is going to come out of your mouth is not going to be okay with me. Because it needs to happen. He needs to 
to verbally stem sometimes to keep him in the place where he can actually listen. And sometimes, I mean, oftentimes I'll say quiet mouth. So, cause I'm talking mm-hmm. over him or I'll ask him, can you do this right now? Or do you want to do it later? I give him the option, mm-hmm. but yeah, you're right. It's like, it is so hard, but you know, I mean, we, we can't, I mean, they can't do these things out. It's just, it's not going to be, it's not socially Thanks. acceptable. I mean, we can't. And then it's, it, who knows who's watching, right? I mean, so we have to be so careful, but it's something that can be, I mean, Cody, he, he learned very quickly. It didn't take very long for him to know that he needed to wait to get home. Or at least if we're in a restaurant and we see, we usually will like scope out the restaurant. We're all the whole family. Let's look for little girls in hats because that's a trigger. And if we see one, we usually try to like place him in the the mm-hmm. seat where he is not going to be able to view the little girl, but usually he finds her and then he'll say girl hat. And I'm like, oh crap. Mm. I'm like, all right, someone else. Chicken tenders, chicken tenders, <laughs> chicken tenders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Ma'am, can you take your daughter's hat off, please? Just <laughs> Yeah. So um, we just take him to the bathroom stall. So, you know, you, you figure out what, what works, you know, bathroom stall. So it's like, I go, okay, I'm not taking him to the stall. You're, you're going to take them because I don't really want to, if I don't have to, because I've taken the lady stuff, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's cause he's a man. It's and everyone's like, why are you in here? I'm like, shut the hell up. Get out of my way. We're in here and you don't even know what's going on. <laughs> don't worry um, about it. Don't yeah, worry about it. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and then either that or the car, you know, get him to the car. I just recently we've had to, he's on medical cannabis and I've shared that on my page. He usually just gets it to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It helps him sleep because melatonin doesn't always work. And, but if he's having a really, really bad day, anxiety wise, I I will give him a little bit. And sometimes that can give him a side effect of being aroused. So I had to give it to him one time, just, it, it hasn't been too long ago, maybe a month ago or so. And we had to go to speech and you know, that's where I have to, we have to actually go there. It's not virtual. And I was, I was kind of like, Oh God, I don't know if I should do it because what if he starts touching himself? But if I don't give it to him, he's not going to even be able to go to speech because he's just not feeling well at all. He's just not doing well. And so I gave him a little bit and we were there. And what do you think happens? All of a sudden he starts like, he'll poke at himself. And I'm like, Oh God, I go, Cody, are you okay? I was like sweating. And the speech Mm -hmm. therapist probably like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't think he knew what was going on. I mean, yeah. I, I, I doubt it. If he did, I would be surprised Then I would just say, Cody, do you need to use the restroom? And he'll say yes. But I mean, he gets up and it's like, his pants are huge. And I'm like, oh God. so I'm like trying to block it with my purse. I'm like, let's go buddy. So we were in there forever, forever. And I'm texting my husband. Oh, I'm in the bathroom at speech. What do you think's going on? How's your day? You know, but, <laughs> Happy Tuesday, babe. <laughs> but you know what? You just, what I find in this community, parents, caregivers of special needs, kids, we are so amazing and strong. We figure oh. it out. We mm. are just like amazing, like nothing else. And that to me keeps me going mm-hmm. because I think that I see such strength in so many caregivers and it just, it's amazing to me. It really truly is. And we just, we figure it out. We, you know, have a bad day and something like this comes up and we're like, well, let's go to the bathroom. And then we come out and then we start again and nobody knows. And it's, it's all good. I feel like like I trade the struggle. Like he's not eloping anymore, but he's trying to masturbate in public. Like, (laughs) You know, so you, you always have something like there, there's, there's maybe something, but there's not all of it at one day at one time, every right. day, right. right. God willing. Right. Yeah. I was going to say too, I'm so thankful for like you talking about it. Like my yeah. son is only six, but it's, I mean, he's been touching himself since birth. <laughs> he's always been obsessed with the thing. I mean, from our first moment in like a preschool, like there was a day, a few days they had to like tape his shirt to his pants. So he would not oh. play with himself. And, you know, and so people are always so nice, like, oh, it's normal. And I'm like, yeah, but what's going to happen when he's 12 and he's doing that? 
or we're in public and you know and I mean even people will when I tell them that story they're like what they taped his shirt to his pants and I'm like I don't blame them he's obsessed with the thing like there's nothing else they could probably do team it's called a penis (laughs) and now well we're very open with it being called the penis and now that he's a little more verbal he just talks about the penis all the time so there's another thing too like Billy calls her of a genius oh I love that yeah I love that yeah well (laughs) Well, that's the thing. That's the miraculous thing. So yeah, <laughs> that's well, okay. I think what it I comes look down to is our kids have impulse control issues mm-hmm. with Period. multiple yeah. things. So when they have an impulse, whatever that may be, it's really hard to whether whether that's because it makes them elope or makes them you know stim, which can be very appropriate, but sometimes not depending what the stim is and where you are. A sexual impulse, like you said, like all people have them, but they don't necessarily understand the society parts of it. You know of eloping like you're not supposed to run away and run down the street like or whatever it is so you know I think that is what a lot of these things come down to with our kids is they want something they want to have it right right then and that's where we have to come in and try to teach them all these coping mechanisms and you know that's I think one of the most difficult parts of autism and and they have the like obsessions you know they get they get very centered on certain things so yes Yes, it, it drives me batty. Lately, it's trash and missing cat. You know, the picture of a missing cat when they're when it goes up and then all of a sudden the, the picture's gone. Where did it go? And he talks about it and he wants to go hunting for it. And I'm like, Cody, it means the cat is found. The cat is home. We're so happy. <laughs> then the picture comes down and he's like looking at me. He's like, and I'm like, oh my God, God in heaven, help me. Help me explain this. <laughs> you, you put it back up. Yeah, yeah, put it back. Just back. take one. Take one. Out. Yeah, take one with you. Yeah. I, oh my god! I've got Canva. I'll send you a few. Yeah. <laughs> my daughter stumbled across, um, and I've talked about it a few times, but she really likes Kristen Wiig, so she series Kristen Wiig movies and Bridesmaids came up, and I thought nothing of it. It's a comedy. Well, the first three and a half minutes is a sex scene between Kristen Wiig and John Hamm, which my daughter has, and it's funny, but it's not funny. From beginning to end, she's mastered every sound, every movement, all of it. So she walked up to her male teacher, put her tongue in his ear and asked him for a slow kiss. So, you know, we've just been dealing with a lot of that right now. (laughs) We had an IEP meeting and I had her, you know, her amazing occupational therapist on there, um, her, her, her two BCBAs and Um, you know, her occupational therapist talked about masturbation and talked about not shaming her and talked about how natural it is. But like Kim said, it's an impulse control. And, you know, just explaining, like, if Kaya sees a male, I shouldn't care if you're male. I mean, she was just old, young, just kiss me. And (laughs) it's trying to, you know, her body's changed. She's got breasts. I mean, Mm -hmm. she has nipple. I mean, her whole body has changed. All of it has changed. And so I don't think that she is really, you know, she's curious about it. And my, one of my really good girlfriends, she's a child psychologist. She has four children. She always said to me in the beginning, do not shame her. It is natural, but a neurotypical child knows to not do it in the living room in front of a family dinner, you know? Right. So I reached out to you, Lisa, because I just didn't know what to do. It was happening everywhere. She's discovered her areas. Yeah. And so I always say private, private, private. And she'll go in a room. And now if I walk down the hallway, she'll say private. Right. <laughs> you get it, girl. You get it. You know, <laughs> I have to say, I, I embrace it because when Cody has his, we call it quiet time here in our house. He is a different person. He's like, I'm like, yes, it's, it's, I'm like, <laughs> some days I'm like, it's like three or four times. I'm like, I don't care. He's having the best day ever. This is the best day ever. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, yes, you go. Have it, have it. So, I was just saying to my husband the other day, because we have my son's four and a half, my daughter's two and a half, two and a half, getting close to two and a half, both autistic. I'm like, what are we going to do when both of these kids are teenagers? <laughs> we're going to be in some trouble, <laughs> you know, like I, so it's nice to hear like tips that ha- have worked. And one thing I appreciate so much about your story is the talking about things, because I think, and I've said this before, I have a little bit of mom guilt at the beginning when my son wasn't talking because I wasn't talking to him 
because he wasn't talking to me. And I learned over time that, you know, even if they're not talking to you, you should still be talking to them. It's just wasn't something that came natural. But for us looking down the track, I'm like, I don't want to think about it yet. <laughs> you know, it's so far down, the, but it, we're going to have to brace ourselves for this situation where both of these kids are going to be teenagers at the same time. And it's going to be quite the experience in our household. So it's good to hear both sides, you know, girls and boys yeah. for me personally, you know, we got it coming. <laughs> it's coming fast. Kimmy, I know a little bit about Alyssa's story and journey and like yeah, how she manages because there are one in every four girl moms, you know. Uh, Do you have any insight as to how you guys navigated actually menstruating, like actually handling? Yep. So as far as the sexual stuff that never came up with her, um, I don't know if she just doesn't have that awareness. We haven't dealt with that yet. I mean, that might be something that girls are some girls are different. Some girls don't get those urges until later in life, you know? So I don't know if that's something that will come up someday, but Thankfully, we haven't had to deal with that aspect of it, but obviously you have the other bigger, you know, changes in girls with their period and getting them when they develop breast. That's all, obviously we had started preparing well, so she didn't get her period until she was 14, which thank you for that. Those (laughs) And her school worked with us and did social stories because obviously we don't have uh, the utilizations of conversation like you have at Cody because Alyssa loses a lot with words the more words you use the less she seems to understand so she's gotten better she's definitely her receptive language has gotten stronger over the years but I like to explain it as like sometimes I feel like she lives in a house where everybody speaks a different language than her and over time she has learned aspects of that language but like the more you kind of say to her and then she starts getting confused and then she gets super irritated that kind of triggers her or she thinks you're saying something like she's getting the words and then she's like, I don't like where this sentence is going. So <laughs> I'm going to shut it down. So um, they did social stories. They were kind of graphic and they were, they were awkward. They, I was doubtful and I was like, I don't want to do these. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but I did do them and I'll say like social stories are one of these things that sometimes don't seem like they're working. Sometimes you're, you know, you're reading it and you're showing the pitches and it's very hard to really gauge if they're taking it in but Mm -hmm. we've had several situations very difficult situations over the years that we've used social stories and it does seem to click and sink in but not always right away so it's kind of like you have to consistently do it even if you don't think it's working they're going to be taking in part of it so that's a lot of what we did this sounds probably a little weird to people that don't have girls but like I was always very open bathroom door I have four kids I mean I still can't go to the bathroom alone and my youngest is 17 someone (laughs) always has to ask you a question or tell you something my kids rooms across Mm -hmm. the hall so they're always opening their door and being like hey uh, mom it's very (laughs) rare that I even bother to shut the door and I made a decision to let her see what was going on in there personally I'm a I wear pads, so that's a little bit easier. She would like hand it to me. I give her the wrap and a throwaway, just stuff like that. Make sure she saw blood, just so like what right. was going to actually happen to her, it wouldn't be so foreign. And she would she would go, yeah, you know. So she like saw it. Um, that's another thing I did to prepare her. Not everybody is comfortable with that, and that's fine. But I mean, I think that would help her because then she would not I think that's that wonderful I tell you what I, I applaud you gals I'm so glad I don't have a girl I don't think I could do it <laughs> I, so I, she, I, she doesn't like blood <laughs> so like, that was like a real worry for me because like even when she would have like a mosquito bite she would pick she would do it do it until it was like had to be completely gone and like scabbed like so I, that was a little bit of a problem in the beginning because she used to wipe and keep mm-hmm. wiping like almost like she could like wipe, wipe it, it away we all know that oh. don't work yeah 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 so that was an issue she did that a lot in the beginning but she got used to it she's independent (laughs) with her period except for how she kind of does it is if she goes to the bathroom and she sees like blood on her pad she'll change it she doesn't necessarily know when those there's sometimes those moments in between like if you had a heavy period she wouldn't know oops something's happening I need to go take care of this now she doesn't get that. Like she just mm-hmm. goes to the bathroom and takes care of it when she's in the bathroom. So like we've had times where she's leaked. Sometimes she has heavy periods. She's leaked onto her pants and she doesn't understand like why she has to change her pants because she can't see it. That mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah. Does, does she have behaviors because the cramping or anything? Because I always worry about that. 
like so she did in the beginning she got a lot of headaches and she got a lot of cramping and she would take Motrin she kind of she doesn't like to take medicine but she kind of learned this is what we actually how we got her to she still does the liquid but she got a lot of headache right around the time that appeared like the first year a lot of headaches and cramping she doesn't really get the cramping anymore she has the heavy blood flow but not the cramping so we do have an option to put her on a liquid birth control I'm just opting not to do it because even though like they're very heavy but it's like every four months Mm -hmm. that they'll be really heavy they Mm -hmm. don't seem to bother her besides it's annoying if she gets it on her pants and all that stuff but or on the bed or whatever but like it doesn't seem to be hurting her so I don't really want to put hormones in her that could like change you know who knows what could right that could affect her yeah so if it starts affecting her like physically where she's in pain and stuff then that would be a different story but sometimes she'll want to wear a pad even when her period ends sometimes so sometimes we have to hide them because they're expensive (laughs) (laughs) it's like part of her routine so she'll keep doing it but then like she's fine when there's no blood coming and there's no pad to put on and we put them back in the bathroom and she won't put them on again until she gets her period so I mean very minor she's pretty independent with it it was a little bit hard in the beginning but they adapt it's just like Mm -hmm. anything and we never thought we'd get a brown on her because she's so weird with changes she doesn't like any changes Mm -hmm. so with her clothes with anything we had a sat with a a tank top that had a shelf bra Mm -hmm. she wore the same one every day like though she'd only wear this one you just gotta go with it you gotta pick your battles right in school try to help and she was very resistant like she doesn't understand what a bra is she doesn't I mean she obviously saw that she had boobs but like why does she care you know what I mean like (laughs) why do they need to be held differently yeah actually we got her to do a sports bra and that's what she still wears so my daughter loves her boobs she does too but she doesn't have the thing of dark, like she jumps they move and I'll quite often catch her in the bathroom jumping up and down watching them and laughing I don't know if it's almost like a stim with them yeah. moving. but I thought I would put Kaya on the pill initially like early on but we had such a you know adverse reaction to medication that I, I I'm, I'm a little nervous to do that but I know there's a lot of you know in these autism mom things where they put their 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 daughters on the pill because they'll stop their period and they don't have to deal with menstrual stuff but I, I don't think I'll, like Kim said I don't want to alter that in hormones I mean they have such a huge role in behaviors yeah um, oh, my kid can go from happy to dark in a second I'm like oh there's a little puberty right there hormone happening yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? and like Alyssa's just not aware of like certain things like one of the behaviors she has when she gets mad is she'll she'll like pull down the back of her pants it's just because she knows we don't want her to mm-hmm. so it's like I don't think she understands that it's inappropriate. It's just, she knows that we don't like it. So she does it. And like, I always tell people this when she comes out of the she's shower. She's such a ham too. You see yeah, the shop sure. of that hip and she's like, hey, look what I'm doing, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then one, like a couple of times I'm like, go ahead, take your pants off. I don't even care. Like, oh. <laughs> Good for you. Like, what? Go for it. And I'll, like, take some yeah. off and like, to like pull them right back up. But um, when she comes out of the shower and I bought her the biggest house you can imagine. She, she wears her towel straight like she puts it over her head almost like a cape and that's how she wears her towel coming out of the bathroom so her <laughs> back is covered but not her front and then she runs down the hall and nothing like she won't wear a bathrobe I mean we've just accepted it it's just kind of like whatever oh I have a question for you Kim um so Cody is not totally independent in bathing so is your daughter how did so, you get there it, it's been hard for us she's, all right, so she's not, but she's semi-independent. So she gets in the shower and all that herself. But like, as far as washing, she doesn't necessarily wash correctly. So we kind of will stand in the bathroom and kind of go, you know, go under here, get your bum. Yeah. You. She just has to be prompted. And a lot of that, I think that's more prompt dependency on her part than it's actually that she doesn't know because she's just very prompt dependent. So like, but say if it's a summer, there's sometimes like she's had a heavy period. I'll have to go in there and just yeah, clean her up a little up. bit. For the most part, she does it herself, but you kind of have to model it for her. In the same thing with her hair, like she can do it, but it's not going to be washed probably as great as it could be. So if she was taking a shower every day, I wouldn't have to go and do that. We usually shower her like every other day. Sometimes we go to every third day, depending on the time of year and stuff like that. Shaving, all that stuff we have to do for her. I always joke with my husband I'm like he's Cody's starting to learn to dry himself off like he can 
he, he'll rinse his hair. He takes a bath. Okay. He takes a man bath. He loves it. And I love it too, because he gets more quiet time in there. If he needs it, it's lavender. It, you know, he's, he, it calms him down. And you know what? I don't want to get in the freaking shower with him in my bathing suit to try to teach him how to, I'm like, you know what? This works. A lot of men take baths. I don't care. It's working for us. I'm not going to change it. And before, and now he's um, learning to dry himself off and we have to do the same thing. We're like, do it here. And then we're like, do it here. Okay. Do it here. And we're all doing the modeling thing. And I'm like, do the bath. Do the bath. So, she can, so like, she can dry herself off herself. She can do that part. She just doesn't, yeah. for some reason, I don't know why she wears a towel like a cape. It's just her thing. <laughs> so she Rachel like, Flanagan's she favorite part like, of her. She doesn't like do it sideways. She does it the long way. And then she runs oh. down the hall. So she has to run down the hall and through the kitchen to get to her room. Yeah. It can be pretty traumatizing if like, you don't, if somebody's we're used to it because whatever, but like if somebody was there, a guest, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A guest in your house. <laughs> yeah. usually it would be a family member still, but still, yeah. And, um, <laughs> it's, it's, night. Just kind of, it's just kind of funny, but then she'll go in her room. We put her clothes on her bed for her. She'll go in her room. She'll dry herself off get her clothes on herself um yeah so she's, can she do the temperature all by herself too oh she loves hot temp- oh yeah she, she she runs the shower herself oh wow yeah, she'll, she'll go in and do it and um yeah that's great she will go in completely independent we we go in and model the washing and then we leave the bathroom and she'll stay in because she just likes to be in the shower and she'll stay in until it gets cold and then she grabs a towel and comes out on her own. So like semi-independent. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So I was going to ask about who shaves for him. Does he shave himself or do you guys have to shave him? How was that when he started growing hair? Was he like freaked out by that or okay with yeah. it? Yeah. Dad does all the shaving and the nail clipping. I think when it first started, my husband showed Cody on, on his face. This is what he's going to start doing. We first of all, just kind of pretended it with like a razor with no blade, just so he would get used to what it would feel like. Uh, I don't, it was never really difficult. He, he does it while he's in the bathtub because it's easier. So it's usually twice a week. He, he can grow facial hair in a, I mean, in one day it's, he's very hairy. I'm like, <laughs> Because, I mean, the kid's got hair on his butt. I'm like, what the hell? Well, and Alyssa is my hair, my hairiest kid out of all my kids. <laughs> Why, out of all the kids, do you have to be the hairiest? <laughs> so hairy. I and mean, my husband is not hairy at all. I'm like, what is happening here? Both my boys, super hairy. I'm like, I was going to say, does Justin model things for him or does, like, how does that work? Is it easy yeah. to see Justin do it or no? Justin, he's not here a lot. He's, he doesn't show his brother any, you know, he doesn't show him shaving or he does his own thing. Um, It's so weird. I I think people have told me that it will change once Justin moves out. He'll kind of get it. It'll click. I find it may be different for Justin because we have, I have multiple children. So there's three besides Alyssa, but, and they, they help, they've helped so much. You know, they do help like watch her when I need them to watch her and, but I feel that sometimes as they got older, it's like, they just don't want to be bothered with some stuff. And I don't think it's, they love their sister. It's not anything like that, but it's like, my kids don't like do that type of stuff either. I think Justin kind of, that's what he struggles with. And we alternate bathing Cody um, between the three of us. And so, Jet, but Justin only has to do it one night a week. And he's like, I shouldn't have to bathe my twin. I'm like, well, you know, it's, it's just going to make you a better person. It's going to mm-hmm. make you a better person overall. This is our life mm-hmm. and you're helping us out. And while you're living here rent free, I might add <laughs> making, you know, a lot of money a month, I might add, <laughs> um, you're going to do these things. It gives them a different perspective. Like it my does. daughter now works at a daycare and she has a child with some developmental delays in her classroom and the way she can handle and the way she thinks about the situation is so different than other staff that have been in there that are much older than my daughter. And my daughter is self-centered. I'm going to just say it right out. She knows it. So if she hears it, it's the truth. Even being a self-centered, you know, 18 year old, she has a much different perspective with this child because she knows because of her sister when they're younger Lisa and Kim I mean you and Jamie I mean you you all have multiple children but yeah when they're younger it's all they know 
they don't know any different, but as they age and they, their peers and their friends and other families look very different than what our families look like. And maybe, I don't know, Kaya, and she has siblings, but none that live with us. That's a good point. I think that you're, that's, that would probably be my best guess. Yeah, that's a great point. I never thought of it like that. That makes perfect sense to me. You know, he, he sees other families, you know, going on vacation and doing all these things that are, it's just really hard for us. And you know, to be honest, I don't want to go on freaking vacation. I have an awesome sleep number bed. I'm going to stay home. You know, <laughs> you're like Jen, Jen wants, Jen wants to stay home too. She never yeah. wants to go anywhere. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to pack. I don't yeah. know how I'm going to feel tomorrow or what I'm going to want to wear. I might yeah. not want to wear anything. <laughs> so some days I don't want to get dressed. Many days I just get into different pajamas and I'm super happy about that. Yeah. So I'm a real homebody. And I, for yeah. a long time, I was just like, we need to do this. I'm like, why? That's not who I am. I like to be home. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah. And it, you know, Kaya is a great little traveler. Like I said, her dad's in Southern Cal. And so we've, tr she's traveled a lot actually since she was nine months old, but <clears throat> even when it's the best travel day, it is hard at the end of it all because of the work that goes into getting her there. And yeah. so it's like, I'd rather just stay home. I'd yeah. Home. <laughs> it is so stressful, isn't it? And then you're worried about, okay, well, he's not, gonna, are we going to be able to find a swing? What if it's too hot? Ooh. What if he's not doing yeah. well? It just yeah. goes on and on and on. And I'm like, I'm tired and we haven't even left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Vacation yeah. an hour and a half away. Yeah. And the amount of preparation I had to put into it with packing the food she will eat, having it yeah. on ice. I had to have a cooler. I mean, it's just like, it's not enjoyable. It's not no. enjoyable for her ultimately because her anxiety is so high. So it's yeah. like, like you yeah. stay home yeah. and be happy. <laughs> exactly. We just do little, you know, day trips, you know, like, yeah. go to the movie, come home, go to dinner, come home. Yeah. Um, you know, he likes Legoland. We haven't been back, but maybe eventually, um, SeaWorld, you know? So yeah, yeah little things like that. Yeah. It's fine. Well, this has been fascinating. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh, Especially this, for I, me. So fun. So I, fun. I hope you guys invite me back. This was a, a blast. Yes. Was so we would love it. We just want to say your story, your page make a difference to us all, yeah, even if you, you feel questionable you about it. Because you. We've all learned from your page and we are so grateful to have you here joining us and taking the time to be on this podcast about the lovely puberty that we're all You guys are such, your energy is just wonderful. Oh. We come back. We would love to yes. have Oh yeah. Anytime I, you know, I'm always home. So <laughs> <laughs> we do some fun, no reservations ones where we just cut loose. A little, so. Yep. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was, it was well, so, I'm, so, I'm much. so excited. Thank just, you so much. Yeah. You guys yes. made my day. Oh, oh that's oh, nice. You well, day. everyone listening, check us for our next series coming after this um, standalone episode. And we're going to be talking relationships. So we will, See you next time. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you for joining us at the table for our chat with Lisa. If you want to hear more about Lisa and her family, you can find her on her Facebook page, Cody Speaks. Our next series is all about relationships and is coming very soon. If you are enjoying our podcast and wherever you're listening allows, please remember to rate and review us. To join in on the conversation, make sure to follow us at facebook.com slash table for five podcasts or email us at table for five podcasts at gmail.com. We can't wait to sit with you again. We'll see you very soon.